Hey there, my name is Rob Slocum. This is going to be a quick tutorial in Revit 2019 about complex roof design. Um, we're going to start off with a, a fairly simple concept actually. You know, you have to uh, understand the basics before you get into projects like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to com uh, compare the difference between when creating a roof by footprint, the difference between when you're picking lines versus picking walls. Um, it may appear to do the same thing, but in fact you're creating two different solutions. So I'm going to steal something from this model and we're going to create two comparison samples. Let me go to the main floor plan and just get a wall style out of here. And we're going to go to um, a new drawing, paste this in, and we're going to make two side-by-side -side samples on level one. So I'm going to come up to architecture. I'm going to go to roof and I'm going to go to roof by footprint and I'm going to leave it on level one and I'm going to just draw a rectangle over this area here. Now the actual roof overhang I'm going to come up and select pick lines and give myself a one foot overhang off of this outside edge. Now I'm going to use a trim command to clean this up. And then I'm going to define a roof slope on this one edge only by clicking this button and we'll leave it at 9 and 12 pitch for now, that's fine. Hit OK. One thing I didn't do, I'm going to leave this at level 1 and I'm going to set a 10 foot height to that roof. You can't see it because of the cut plane. We'll get to it in a second. We're going to do this all over again. I'm going to go to roof by footprint. Again, come over here, draw a rectangle. And now I'm going to define the baseline of it by selecting pick walls instead of pick lines. Again, give myself a one foot overhang. I'm going to define the slope so I don't have to go back and do it. And very importantly, I'm going to say extend to wall core. Now when I come over here, touch this wall. I'm going to use the trim command to clean this up. And it looks like it created the very identical thing. Let's again set it to a 10 foot height. And you can see both of these on level two. Oh, plus some garbage from practice. So these look pretty much like the same thing, but in fact they're they're quite different. Uh, if I cut a section line between the pick by wall side, I'm going to duplicate this using the copy command over to this one, and let's compare the two. So here's the pick by lines one. You notice we have a wall that's locked to 10 feet and we have our roof plane here that we created. And if you remember, we set it to level one at 10 feet. And in fact, the very bottom of this roof edge at the overhang is measuring to 10 feet. But if you'll notice, there's a space between the wall and the actual roof. I'm gonna turn my detail on here to fine. So now you can see the sheathing of the wall and the center core of this wall. If I wanted to set this roof to this wall, I would physically have to move this wall down, find points to line that roof up, which is fine. Sometimes you have to actually do that. It works. It's a solution. Um, but let's, let's explore a little more about what happens here. If I touch this roof and I come over and I say I make an adjustment, say I don't want a 912 roof, just for the exaggeration of it, I'm going to say I want a 14 and 12 pitch roof. Notice where the pivot occurred. It's now 14 and 12 pitch, but it's pivoting from this outside face. So I would have to go back now, move that roof down again, and get that set up correctly. So very doable. In fact, I do roofs like this all the time. Just wanted to explain how that works. So let's go back and compare that to what happens when you select the pick walls tool like we did over here. 
I'm going to double click on this section head and go in and again we have a wall locked at a 10 foot height we have this same roof on level one at 10 feet but notice it's no longer measuring from the outside edge of this roof it's actually measuring to where it joins the wall and if we look further you notice if you recall we actually click the little checkbox to extend to core. It, it's not measuring from the outside of the wall. It set this roof to the outside edge of the wall core, which is exactly, in almost every case I can imagine, what you would actually want. So let's check this out. If I was now to come over here and again give myself a 14 and 12 pitch, notice where this roof now pivots from. It's pivoting from where it attaches to the wall. So the actual fascia of this roof would rise or lower depending on what your roof pitch is. But that's not the only adjustment we have here. If we come over here to this box under construction, you notice that there's an option for raft or truss, and by default it's set to truss. And this is drawn correctly. If this was a truss roof, you would have a longitudinal framing member here that would sit all the way across the top of your your wall plate, and that's how that would look. But Oftentimes in residential construction, especially where I live, houses are stick framed, meaning they just use rafters. And we have that option as well. If I come over here, change this option to rafter, notice when I move my mouse away from this that it's going to change how it's anchoring that roof to the wall. Now it's put it to the back. So we literally have a rafter seat, or some people call it a bird's mouth, that this rafter sits on. And again, we can change the roof pitch, and it's going to adjust right at that little section, right like you would always want. Now, it seems to me that this would be a no-brainer, that you would always use this tool. And in fact, I would love to. But the problem with it is, is that are at times that you will have a roof fail when it's locked to a wall. Or there'll be other times when you have maybe an open span that has a beam on it and there's no wall to select to. Well, in that case, you have to pick roof by lines tool. The point of this is I wanted people to understand completely what the difference of both of them were. So I hope this was helpful. If you find it helpful, please like this video and subscribe. I'll try to make more and I'll see you soon. Thank you.